there's assumption when you're trying to put yourself out there to grow your business, get clients, that your marketing needs to be attractive, right? Your website should look polished, look good. Um, if you show up on social media or video, you should look good and polished and not be hesitant like I'm, I am being on video right now, meaning you should be editing your videos to take out all the ums and the ahs and the pauses and the boring parts. And I'll tell you, I used to believe that when I started my business, I didn't know any better. And of course, this is sort of in the, it's in the water that showing up for your, you know, visibility and promotion and just your online presence should be attractive. And when I did that in the early years of my business, I started in 2009. So it's been about 14 years now. When I, when I did that, I did notice that I, I attracted ideal, you know, not ideal, I should say, I attracted clients faster. Okay, I attracted uh, an audience faster by leaning into the most attractive parts of myself, the most charismatic parts of myself, the most, um, you know, the, the things that get people, get people, you know, even that phrase, you get people to engage with you, you get people to do this or that is in short, manipulative. But that's how you think. That's most of you probably think that's how marketing is supposed to be. You do stuff consciously to attract, influence, charm, manipulate, persuade people to then work with you. And then, then you could do your heart's work. Then you could do your soul. Once they've been charmed, persuaded, you know, taken off the fence to work with you, then you can be your authentic self, right? Then you can uh, take off the mask or to really settle into your spirituality and your, 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 um, you know, your humanness. So in the first couple of years of my business, that's what I did. Cause that's, like I said, it's what is assumed to be marketing by everybody else. And as I said, I did get some engagement faster but then I had a crisis of conscience um, around 2012, leading into 2020, 2014, a couple of years where I just, I just felt it was not aligned with my soul to keep doing marketing the way that it is understood to be done. And so I um, started to change. Uh, like I want, I want to show up in my life authentically, no matter what it is that I'm doing, I don't want to pretend anymore. I don't want to manipulate any manipulate people anymore. I don't want to charm people anymore. I don't want to persuade people. I don't want to be attractive to other people anymore. I want to explore what is a higher voice, a deeper voice, you know, from my soul or from my source and I want to express that as truthfully as I can. I want to do business in a way that grows my soul, Re even regardless of results. But I trust that if I go deep and really show up with a heart of service, on the one hand, inner exploration and really showing the truth of my experience today. And on the other hand, lean into my heart of service, which includes, of course, getting to know my audience and feeling the compassion for what they want so that that naturally leads me into offering what they want, which sells, right? This the simplest uh, tip I have for you on how to make more money and how to get more clients is to sell what sells. So many of us sell what don't sell, <laughs> okay? You sell what sells. And how do you sell what sells? You lean into your compassion for the people who, whose attention you have, starting with your friends, your colleagues, the, you know, their referrals or whatever. And then you sell what they want you to sell. 
simple as that because you have the true compassion. You know, you no longer have to pretend to say, well, I don't care about this thing. No, I do care about this thing because I care about them. Right. But this, so this is all about doing business from the heart, truly. So marketing, again, oh, I haven't mentioned this in this video, yet, but marketing is essentially content and offers. Those two things. Are you, are you doing those two things? Some of you are doing those two things and some of you might not be. And now you can lean into more of one or the other content and offers. That's marketing. Okay. Content is where people get to know you for free before they work with you for payment. Okay. And sure, people can, you don't have to do content if you, you, if your service is so extraordinary that you just get all your clients to word of mouth, you get plenty of clients to word of mouth. That's not true for me. Well, now, now, now it is, but for most of my years in business, that wasn't true. My service was pretty good. I think your service is pretty good too, but it's not so extraordinary, right? Your service is not so extraordinary that you just get, have a waiting list of people. A few people are, are really extraordinary and they have that. Most of us, by definition, by definition, most of us are average. You think you're extraordinary? You're actually average. Probably. I'm average. I'm average in my field. Now, now, so many years into it and so much practice, 14 years into it, full-time, practicing a lot, full-time business, 14 years. Now I can say I'm probably, <laughs> now I'm probably lying to myself. I'm probably above average in certain ways now. And so some of my services and some of my courses do are are so extraordinary they they do get regular word of mouth and i do have enough you know clients that way you know uh, course course participants that way but most of my years wasn't like that and probably most of you watching this you are a wonderful person and you provide a service that you believe is very good but it's not extraordinary it's not so extraordinary that you have just a waiting list of people just by word of mouth so that that means guess what you have to lean into content that's how you grow your reach <clears throat> so that people get interested in working with you and then they buy your service. That's pretty good. It's worth it. It's worth buying. And some of the people who work with you might start telling some of their friends, but you don't have enough word of mouth yet to have just a waiting list of people. So that's why you need both content and offers. So in the, in the realm of content, as I started talking about this, we don't have to be we don't have to try to be attractive. And in fact, for, for my marketing, and I, I let me finish telling the story. When I first tried to be attractive and all that, and I, I attracted some people, I noticed that they didn't stay long. They didn't stay with me throughout my transitions, throughout my ups and downs, when I was finding myself and and then emerging as a, as a more authentic presence that is more aligned with who I really am instead of pretending, instead of posturing, instead of trying to be charismatic and, and making sure that I was doing certain things to, you know, had to try to do certain things that didn't feel me. So those people didn't stay. And instead, once I came through my transition of like, let me show up as authentically as I can today. And, and here's the important part without attachment to results. Can you do that? It's hard. Well, this is age old wisdom, right? Without attachment to results is how we can truly be authentic. Because if you're saying, well, I'm going to show up on this video and people better like it. And there better be this many likes or then you're immediately not authentic. You're immediately posturing and saying, well, I got to, I got to perform so that I get these likes because that's what I'm really after. That's really the that's really the goal rather than the goal being expression of truth and service to the other. If that is the goal, and that's my goal here, without attachment to the business results, I don't know how many people are going to see this. I don't know how many people are going to like it. But did I, after these 20 minutes, feel more alive because I allowed, I practiced again what the voice of my soul is, my energy signature. And did I again lean into the compassion I have for the audience and the yearning to be one with the audience in, in heartfelt service and love? And if that happened in these 20 minutes, then my life, then, then my living of those 20 minutes was worthwhile, wasn't it? 
But if I'm showing up performing, trying to be something, trying to get likes, trying to grow my email list, trying to make sales, all of that means to an end, means to an end stuff makes life not worthwhile. It makes life inauthentic. And so when I started to do marketing, do content from a much more authentic place, what happened was I noticed that people, that I now was drawing people to me who were really sensing a deeper connection beyond the surface level stuff that is unattractive or attractive. And, and actually, I'll tell you the truth. I was purposely, sometimes I purposely still am, try to be unattractive. Not, not that I'm performing to be unattractive, but I, I'm almost like testing my audience to say, if I, if I make this mistake that is coming out of me naturally right now, if I, I, or or I, I notice what comes out of me and it's a mistake or it's something unattractive and I don't mind. And I just continue with that authentic expression. I don't judge myself and I just continue that way. I notice that the people who stay are much more likely to keep staying. And if and when they decide to work with me in my courses or in my programs, they're much more likely to stay as well and it, and to engage and to be grateful for the opportunity to work with me. In other words, there are much more ideal clients. So that is why I, 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 I talk about marketing in the way I do authentic marketing is I'm trying to create an alternative to the mainstream where it's all about um, being persuasive, being attractive, um, performing, getting likes, getting attachment to business results, which I believe is not healthy for the soul. It's not healthy for the soul's expression, certainly, because the soul says, the soul says, I wish for every moment in this life to be meaningful, to be deeply meaningful. I don't know if I'm going to live past today. None of us do. So may today and the actions I do today not be so I can get the new clients, but may the actions today be of such a connection with the soul, which means with the divine, however you define that, the divine source, uh, letting that spirit live through you as much as possible, which is about experiencing of this life, uh, the meaningfulness of this life and the connection to the others in this life the other souls in this life if, and as much service and love as possible. If that can be how we do our content, the interesting part of it is that it's so unique and so connected to the soul that I, I, I believe that it, you know, without being attached to the results, it happens to have a benefit to, to authentic business as well. But the problem is we cannot be attached to the timeline. The, the, the way of authentic marketing, by definition, if it is not attached to business results, it means you cannot be attached to the timeline of, well, I made these five videos and how come I didn't get a client yet? Oh, you, you, you just became attached again to the business result and to the timeline of it, which means you're going to, if you're going to be attached, you're not going to express your soul. You're not going to be deeply connected to the divine spirit working through you. Can't. The divine spirit doesn't say, well, make five videos and then you'll get three clients. That's how the funnel works. Oh, this funnel and that, you know, lead generation system, you're supposed to do this and you still get that. Can't. You're immediately unattached and misaligned from what the divine spirit wants to work through you. However, you to define the divine spirit, the higher self, the most authentic, meaningful way of you living life. And in the most way, in the way that is most likely to fulfill you deeply, you're, you're misaligned from that immediately when you're attached to the results. So in other words, I don't think about attractiveness or unattractiveness. And so when I, when I am unattractive and I notice that in the mainstream way of, oh, that's unattractive. The irony of it is I just bought a new shirt. <laughs> so, so this shirt is probably more attractive than 
if you look at my previous videos, my my other shirts and my other ways of being and whatever, it's like, and I'm always I'm always still practicing. What does it mean to be real without performing for results? Because I want to be real with my soul and with my heart of service. That's what I want to be real for. And so when I notice, ah, this is unattractive in the mainstream sense, I don't judge. I, I practice, try not to judge it so that I can allow, allow the natural expression of, <laughs> okay, this is, you know, before I started this video, I said, may I be, may I be connected to the expression of my soul and may I be in my heart of service to, to the other. And if I can do that, and I always have to keep coming back, coming back, coming back to it. Because again, after this video, as I go interact with other people, there is the societal conditioning. You're supposed to perform and be this way so that we can be happy, right? So that you could you could uh, be be uh, appropriate to be, you know. And I'm not saying you, you shouldn't be appropriate in society, but I'm saying when it comes to your content, though, when your content is 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 about your soul's expression, then you really can be inappropriate, you know. When you're with friends and family, you should, you know, to be as appropriate as you need to be, obviously. But when you're on video, when you're writing, when you're creating content, that is when I really encourage you to be in as un unattractive as you as you naturally need to be or are, to be as inappropriate as you naturally in your soul's expression are, because the irony of it is that's what makes content unique. Everybody else is trying to be appropriate for society, to be attractive. To what is, what is attractive? What, what does your face need to be look like to be attractive? I don't know. I don't. <laughs> it's like what is what do you need to wear to be attractive? Now, at, at this point in my business, where I feel like I represent a community of people who are, then I feel like I I do need to be I dress a little bit more appropriately and things like that. But in my expressions, though, I still. I still aim to be as natural to the flow of Tao as possible. The spirit and the soul working through me as possible. So content and offers, right? Like you right now, you might say, George, I, that's all sounds good, but I need my, I need more clients right now. How do I get more clients authentically? Right. I, like I said, if you, if you lean into the, the authentic content, you're much more likely to draw real people that are going to stay with you. And on the other hand, you need to make offers and you need to sell, not just what you feel like selling because you're just within your own self. Remember, it's always this dance between being fully in yourself, your highest self, your deepest self, but also at the same time, being deeply in service to humanity, being deeply in service to the other. You can't just be in service to self. You have to be service to other as well. Okay, and that that intersection is authentic marketing, and so the offer part, the, the content is as in, in yourself as possible, meaning your higher, deeper connection with your with your your highest and deepest self. Content, the offers is as as highest and deepest connection with the other as possible, because your money doesn't come from yourself and your exploration of yourself. Your money comes from other people deciding to pay you. So your your offers must be selling what they want you to sell. And you say, well, I don't feel like selling what they want me to sell. Well, that means you don't have enough compassion for the other person. You've been too much into your own passion. It's this dance between passion and compassion. And so when it comes to the offers, you know, the passion draws the audience, but the offers gets them to buy. The compassion gets them to buy. I lean into what my what you want, right? I'm always asking you, what do you want me to sell? What do you want me to offer? I will offer it because I care about what you care about. If I care about you, then that means I care about what you care about. I mean, if I'm truly in service to humanity, that means I'm not just in my own thing and so enamored with my own expression. If I'm truly in service to humanity, then I care about humanity, about you. So I talk to you and I find out what you care about, what, what, you're, what you're struggling with and what you're yearning for. And I'm saying, let me lean into that compassion for you based on my ability to serve that let me lean into that and let, let me love you in that way that you understand. Because otherwise, if I'm loving you in the way you don't understand, I'm not loving you. So I hope this is helpful. And I have a lot more, of course, videos about this kind of thing. And I hope you watch it. This is getting too long. So I'll, I'll end it here. I hope this is helpful. Again, the message is lean into your heart and your soul 
in your content that means even if it's unattractive and, and inappropriate or whatever society deems to be lean into more of you and when you're in your offers lean into more of your compassion for the audience that you have even if it starts with three friends and two colleagues lean into your compassion for them what they want and and provide that out of your heart of compassion and then they'll buy so i hope this is helpful thanks for watching